Many people fall into the trap of thinking Blood Rage is a game solely about winning battles and conquering regions. Like most other games, Blood Rage is simply about collecting more points than your opponents. Funnily enough, losing battles and units can be an even more effective way of winning. In this video, we'll go over the best ways to get points in a 3 and 4 player setting with just the base game. A typical winning score in a game of Blood Rage can be anywhere from 100 points to 250 points. Clan stats can play a significant role in this score, but don't go into every game with the expectation of maxing them all for 60 points. There are plenty of different scoring avenues that you will need to utilise such as Ragnarok, quests, battles and upgrade cards. Blood Rage is divided into three ages, and each age you'll start by drafting six cards. Generally it's a good idea to draft a balanced hand. Ideally that would be 2-4 battle cards, 1-2 quest cards, 0-2 upgrade cards, and 0-1 monster cards. It's more important to draft good cards than stick to these limits exactly. We'll go over drafting for each age in more detail shortly. One of the best things you can do in the first age is to secure a region for yourself by covering all of its villages with your units. This is easier to do in regions with only 3 villages and is just as rewarding. Controlling your region ensures an age cannot be ended by pillaging unless you are ready. Unless someone can test your region with a ship, you will be free to pillage it for the stat and easily complete the region's quest in future rounds. Your units are safe from the troll or fire giant invading and killing them. If the area is the Ragnarok region in the Third Age, you also secure valuable endgame points for yourself. Your goal for each age will mostly be the same in all games. Ages 1 and 2 are about raising your clan stats in order to facilitate most of your point scoring in Age 3. That's not to say totally ignore scoring in the early game, but put it at a much lower priority. The first age is the easiest time to raise your clan stats. With an empty board there will be plenty of undefended regions open for pillaging. Take advantage of this by invading with your leader on your first turn. Look for a region with a rage or horn to pillage, but try to stay away from other players, as an early battle will likely only disadvantage both of you. Rage is generally the clan stat you want to raise first. Having more actions than your opponents is always beneficial, but more importantly, having actions after everyone else has passed in a round will allow you to control the board. When other players have passed, you can freely choose your battles, disrupt quests, and position yourself for the following round. This is the reason Loki's Trickery is such a strong card in the first age. With each player having only 6 rage, you can steal a good percentage of that while making them waste battle cards. This strategy is easy to pull off. Place warriors where your opponents have units, and initiate pillages on them when possible. Be careful about opponents trying to end the round early by pillaging every region. Loki's Trickery is a card you will have to play around in most games. Spending the least amount of rage possible on cards is a good starting point for a counter. Dwarf Chieftain is a free monster with a strength of 2. Frigga's Charm is free as well, and will save you multiple rage over the course of the game. Loki's Blessing and Frigga's Sucker both save you rage by having warriors invade for free at certain times. Loki's Domain is cheap and will give you an underrated amount of points throughout the game. The troll offers fair strengths for the rage cost, and will cause your opponents to effectively lose rage by killing their warriors. Sea Serpent offers great synergy with ship upgrades in ages 2 and 3, but is extremely expensive to play in age 1. I typically avoid invading with any ship early, as they're expensive and can't move around, which is why Loki's Dragon is rated low. Brothers in Arms won't add too much strength to your army, most cards can be picked ahead of it. Thor's Glory doesn't give enough points for its upfront cost. Lord of Hammers makes your leader cost 3 more rage than necessary for very little benefit. Tears Domain turns your valuable quest cards into average battle cards, don't do this. Quests can generally be taken towards the end of the draft, or when there is a hand with no other good cards. Make sure to grab 1 or 2 for the flexible stat increases. Battles in the first age are very straightforward, there are no traps or hidden tricks. Plus 5 and plus X are the strongest battle cards, while plus 4 and plus 3 will still have a meaningful impact due to the low amount of units on the board. Frigga's Grace is useful to have against players that intentionally lose battles, but note that it only works if you are the player initiating the pillage. A good opening sequence of moves would be Invade with Leader, Pillage, Invade with Dwarf Chieftain, Pillage, Invade with Warrior to secure region. It won't ever be this straightforward with multiple opponents, but it shows how invading early can give you good tempo as opposed to playing upgrade cards early. 
In this example from late in age 1, red and blue have both passed for the age and we are still playing with 4 rage thanks to Loki's trickery. Red has played one quest which we can assume is Alfheim since they have control of a region there. Blue has played two quests which we can assume are Jotunheim and Mannheim as they have units there. Placing a single warrior in Mannheim will deny one of their quests. The only unpillaged region on the board is Yggdrasil which also happens to be our quest. As the plus 5 battle card has already been used this age, our plus 3 card will be the strongest or equal strongest card left. Invading with another warrior and marching to Yggdrasil with a total strength of 6 will ensure we can pillage it with 100% certainty. As we will be the first player next age, as long as we can draft a strong battle card, then pillaging Yggdrasil again may be a viable option. Your plans in age 2 will be heavily dependent on how much rage you have managed to get from age 1. Fire Dragons is an excellent source of glory and combos very well with an Age 3 upgrade. Loki's Eminence and Odin's Inspiration also offer valuable points, particularly if you have secured an upcoming Ragnarok region. Dark Elf has 3 strength in Yggdrasil for only 1 rage cost, which is a great exchange. Tyr's Challenge can be very effective if you have a region to yourself and sufficient rage. Tears Prowess is more costly, but having to draft fewer battle cards in Age 2 and 3 can be an advantage. Frigga's Protection is more of a safety net, but can definitely come in handy. Fire Giant is a very strong monster, but one I would only consider drafting with 8 or more rage. Lord of Axes again makes your leader cost 3 more rage than necessary, but the benefit is a bit more worthwhile this time. Valkyrie can net you a decent amount of glory, but probably never as much as you would think. Experts in Arms makes all your warriors now cost 2 rage to invade with. Thor's Domain costs a considerable amount of rage to gain a small amount of tempo. Tempo you probably lost by playing this card anyway. Battles in Age 2 become a lot trickier to navigate with the addition of battle cards that can be played after the initial card reveal. There are 3 Heimdall's Eyes, which means the maximum possible strength from battle cards can be plus 12. It's unlikely one player will have all three of them, but you can usually assume one or two are possible. Heimdall's Watch forces everyone in the battle to discard their card and choose another. If this card is in the draft, then it will be played at some point during Age 2, either by you or probably against you. You may as well just draft it yourself to get the point reward from it. Odin's Tide decimates large groups of units. The only way of stopping it is by discarding it with Heimdall's Watch. If you see a lone warrior or ship coming towards your region, you can assume one of these battle cards will be played, possibly both. Keep track of who has played Odin's Tide, as they will likely have lost the battle and be able to play it again. With players having more rage and there being less regions to pillage, ages are more likely to end from having every region pillaged the later the game goes. If you have to spend the beginning of an age replenishing your army, then you are more at risk of having an age end before you're ready. This is generally why it's a bad idea to have the bulk of your army die from Ragnarok in ages 1 and 2. If you are nearing the end of an age and have extra rage to spare, then it's fine to exchange a warrior or two for glory. This becomes a non-issue in the third age, as there is no fourth age you'll have to prepare for. The Ragnarok region in the third age should be a focal point for conflict. All your focus should be on scoring points, and thankfully age 3 is full of cards that help you achieve this. Frigga's Domain and Internal Dragons make a scary combination that no player should be allowed to have. Frigga's Domain allows you to repeatedly destroy and bring back your ship for 12 glory each time. If combined with Frigga's Sacrifice as well, you won't even need to rely on other players winning a battle to destroy your ship. Loki's Wrath and Thor's Conquest can both give large amounts of points. They work against each other, so pick one and not both. Odin's Throne will give roughly 20 more points for two completed quests. Lord of Spears should help finish maxing your clan stats. Assess how many stats it's going to give you and how many points that will be worth before drafting. Master in Arms adds 4 strength for each pair of basic warriors you have. If that's a few, it makes winning battles trivial. Monsters are generally not as much of a priority in Age 3, but Soldier of Hell provides 3 strength for no cost. Frost Giant and Volo Witch are expensive, with situational benefits. Tears Wrath turns your quest cards into good battle cards, but this is still something you don't want to do. Battles in the Final Age have a bit of a rock-paper-scissors feel about them. Thor's Primacy completely negates all text cards, which are normally effective against high-strength battle cards. 
The fact that there are multiple Thor Supremacy cards and not many regions to pillage makes all text battle cards quite unappealing. Odin's Judgment can pay off very nicely in certain games though. There are at most two Heimdall's Gazes available, which makes plus 12 strength a possibility again. Theoretically, plus 14 strength is possible if a player kept a Heimdall's Eye from the previous age, but it's unlikely to happen. With all these different tricks and interactions, it's more important than ever to keep track of which battle cards have been played in Age 3. I'll put a link in the description to a list of all the cards available at all player counts. Keep in mind there will always be a couple of random cards that won't ever be dealt out each age. This score of 182 in a 4 player game came mostly in the 3rd age, which is typical for all games. To give an idea of the score progression, at the end of the first age I was on 14 points, at the end of the second age I was on 49 points, and at the end of the third age 152 points, with an extra 30 coming from clan stats. I'll leave a link to the full replay of this game in the description. That's all the tips I have for Blood Rage. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I make strategy videos every week, so if that's the sort of content you enjoy, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and good luck.